the communication out um, at the end of this week with a little note about that when it's happening. And then the Friday morning is when you would actually see the new next Friday, the seventh is when you would see the new interface and I'll send something out as well. Um, so we are new to zoom ish. So if we kind of fumble a little bit, just bear with us. We're kind of all learning this new technology um, here. And um, we have muted you all just because there's so much background noise that people aren't even aware of that it would just kind of be a cacophony of dogs barking and paper rustling and all of that. So um, we're going to use a chat window that Rob Knight is going to facilitate. Um, so if you have questions that come up, um, we'll either save it to the end if it, you know, if we need to, or he'll stop me and ask a question, he'll read it out, and then I'll answer it. I don't have the chat window open, so I can't see what you guys are chatting. Um, so um, let's get started. Um, so what you guys should be seeing is my screen. So this, this is my computer desktop. And this is what the um, new interface looks like when you log in. So I've just, just logged in. I have um, assumed an identity of Melissa DeWitt, who is a site manager um, here on campus for multiple WCMS sites. And um, what this is, most of you are site managers, so I wanted to kind of show you what you'll see. Um, and what users would see. I see a lot more than you guys would ever need to see or want to see um, than the, the, the normal site manager or user. Um, so this is what the new dashboard looks like. Um, so <clears throat> one thing that's new with this version is that <clears throat> you have one dashboard. In previous, in the, the current version we're using, um, you have a dashboard per website. So if you manage or work in multiple websites, you would go and select that website from the site selector and then you'd get that dashboard and you would go to another one and get that dashboard. So it's specific to the dashboard, or to the site that you're looking at. Um, here, it's basically one dashboard for all of your sites. Um, so you, similar, we, right now we have widgets, but these are kind of the new dashboard widgets that you'll see, this is the default that you'll see when you log in initially. Kind of over here on the left is, you know, hello, welcome back, so and so. Um, it'll give you the date, kind of some, you know, messages that you have. Then you have a list here of all the sites that you have access to. This may be one site, this may be, you know, 12. This depends on how many sites you have access to. Um, what you'll need to do for this dashboard, because it's specific to, it's, you have one dashboard, when you want to um, use features like the link checker, you would have to um, go to the um, link checker here and use this little edit button and basically configure this and select the site that you want the link checker to work in. Um, so I would select this and it would pop up you know, the links for link checks for that. And then you would go and switch it back and forth. Um, other thing that you're gonna need to do right away when you log in, something that we can't do for you, is you're just gonna basically need to configure this dashboard with your, um, with a default site. This would be like the site that you work on the most. So you would just, again, click this little pencil icon and you would say, okay, which site do I want to be my, you know, um, default site and then, you would save that, and then you get these, all these um, new content wizards. And so this is the same page types and um, content assets that you would, um, you're currently using, directory page, external linking, you know, files, I wanna create a new gallery page, et cetera. They just look different, it's like this hot pink. Um, so this is the dashboard. Kind of a fun new thing is, um, which you may use or may not, I, I kind of am digging a little bit, I might use this, is uh, this task board. So you have this little widget where you can create tasks and you can either assign it to yourself or you can assign it to any other user. Um, and then you can give it a due date. So this is kind of a way for you to kind of let each other know, hey, go to this, um, let me show you a walkthrough. So you can add a task and you can say, oh, okay, you know, I'm Teresa, um, this, you know, change banner image. Here, I want to assign it to, you know, somebody else, um, and I get a list of all the, you know, users, and I can give it a high priority if I want, give it a due date, 
I can provide a link to that asset and then you can create this task. Um, so then that person then has a task in their little bucket. If I'd assign it to myself, it would be there for me. So that's kind of a, a fun little thing that you might play with um, or not, kind of a way for people who have a lot of users in a site, kind of to, you know, the site manager, you guys want to assign work out, you can assign the tasks in there. Um, as far as I know, there aren't any emails sent for that, so you'd have to depend on them to actually log in and see them. But that's Teresa? Yeah. Do you know if um, someone, if anyone can assign a task to anyone else in the system? Is that yes. how tasks work? Yep. So you can, like I can, so anyone can assign it to anyone else. The only limitation on it is that if you want to reference a, uh, an asset, like, oh, on this page, you only have access to the content that you have access to. So I can't assign something to some random site, you know, go fix this. So it's like, I would have to, um, does that make sense? So it's like, if I have access to two sites, I can only reference those two sites in that task, but I can assign the work to anyone that I want to. Okay. So that, that user list comes up, the full user list of everybody. Um, so something we could, you know, to play with and use or not, just a, a little feature there. So that is kind of all the widgets. Hold on, checking my notes. Um, oh yeah. Um, so the, um, oh yeah, content to review. So we don't really have this feature uh, configured yet. So that's something if you guys wanna use this feature, put a ticket in and we'll configure it for your site. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of the dashboard. Um, Robert, are there any burning questions that came through chat about that before I move on? Just one more clarification on tasks. You can assign a task to yourself, that's correct? Yes, yes, Okay. absolutely. Anyone, yourself or anybody else, or just that one person you don't like and you want them to get all the work. <laughs> um, assign tasks as retribution. Absolutely. Um, okay, so now that we are in a, um, a site, um, or from the dashboard, what you would do is you would, first you have to select the site that you want to, you know, create something new. So as Melissa, I have access to all the social sciences sites, so I'm just going to pick one randomly here. Um, so I choose a site, and this is what I see. I basically see, just as before, the left-hand side has all the content, um, this folder structure here, over here. And then we see kind of the same um, information here. But this is kind of at a glance. Um, it lets you see, you know. Um, hey, Teresa, I can't see your screen right now. What? Your screen went blank. I can't oh, see. Oh, uh, I see the screen. What did I do? Hold, please. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Um, that's weird. It says stop. It says I'm sharing. If you refresh your page, what do you get? That's so weird. Yeah, all we see is white. Maybe you can. Stop. Let me. Let me stop For sharing and then. Um, oh, hey, it's me. Well, hello, Rob. Um, I'm going back then, to you. Uh, <laughs> now it's you. Oh, wow, that's really big. And I'm going to share my screen again. And. Um, oh, you know what? It opened a new window. Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, um, let's try this. Okay, can you guys see that? It's like folders on the left in the list mm -hmm. of folders. Okay. Yes, now we can. Good. Okay. Um, so this is, you know, I go to a site and this is what I see. So still the same, you know, folder structure you're always going to see. Um, all the icons are different. So you're where you're used to, you know, certain icons, they are different now. Um, they're all kind of this charcoal gray um, here. Your trash bin has moved. It's now here at the top above your content. So um, just a little note about that. And so let's see, let's pick a page here. So when you um, go to edit a page, the form that you see, so you still see this as normal. Don't 
don't be thrown by kind of all this. It highlights all these different regions, um, which, you know, just gives you an idea of like, oh, this is the global block. Oh, this is the left nav. But it's nothing you really need to worry about or do anything with. So gone now are all these tabs that you had, view, edit, move, rename, all those tabs that you used to have. And they've basically condensed everything to the two most common things that you do. You edit and then you publish. So, um, so to edit something, you would just click edit and then you get, so the, the form is all different, obviously. So you get all these, the same fields, they just looks different. So don't, you know, don't freak out. It's just things are going to take, you know, just look differently. So you have the same WYSIWYG editor, um, but you then, you now have kind of these um, sub menus under edit, under formatting, under insert, table. So it's just kind of things are just kind of tucked away. Again, the most common things are out kind of front facing. Um, so all the features are there. Everything that we do currently is all still there. It's just in different places. Um, another new thing is that when you are working on something or creating something, rather than just hitting submit to save it, you now have what's called save and preview, which is basically I'm going to save what I've been doing and I'm going to look at it. So if I click save and preview, it's going to show me what I've done. You see this little green bar, it says your draft is saved. So it's, then it's turned into a draft automatically. And then when you, um, you look at everything, you're like, okay, that's good. That's what I want. Then you click submit. If you want to go back, you just discard it and go back and edit again. So it's just one more click there that just kind of that extra little, just check it first before you actually submit. Um, so save and preview, then submit. That's kind of a big one there. Um, so let's say I'm here, I'm in this folder about, and then I want to create a new page. Um, instead of like a drop down menu that we used to have that said new, now we just have this little pink plus button here that says add content. So we're just going to click add content and then we get all of those things. And you're like, oh, okay, I want to create a new left navigation page. And you click that and then you get the form again. So one note here that's big that um, it's just going to be something to get your head around, or maybe not it's that big of a deal, is that we no longer have what's called system name. Um, it's now called just name, page name, um, or file name. And so that's just something to be aware of. It still has to follow the same naming conventions. You know, no spaces, no capital letters, no special characters, etc. So that's just kind of a um, naming convention thing. Rules are the same. System name is just now called page name. Um, and the, just if I could jump in, just to say the the importance of this is that this is what becomes part of the URL when you publish this this thing. This page name is what becomes part of the URL. So that should adhere to the naming conventions that we prefer for you for files um, that become part of the URL and that they are always lowercase and separated by dashes. Yes. No spaces, uh, no uppercase, and uh, no special characters except for dashes and in some cases underscores. Yes. Um, yeah, so um, Rob, any questions burning that have come in that would be applicable to kind of call out now that have come in? So um, there, folks are wanting to get some clarification on save and preview versus publish. Publish is still a separate step, correct? Great questions, yes. So, so I've saved and previewed, I'm now hitting submit, so I click submit. And um, you can type in a, co a comment here like, oh, I updated the banner image or something or I want to check my spelling, you can do that here, or I just hit submit. And then um, now it's saved. And then you get a little reminder. It says you've, these have been saved. You want to publish them. So it's a nice little like, don't forget to publish. But even if I had exited out of that, you know, just like, nah, I, don't know, you know, I didn't read that. You just still have to do publish and you click the tab, you get this little um, dialogue box here and you leave all those checked. It's just as you currently do. 
and you hit submit. And then that submit basically starts the published job. So still separate. Don't, you know, the save and preview, submit and publish three separate things. Does that help? Yeah, one other question. Um, I'm, I'll interrupt you again if I come up with another one, but one that's shown up here is uh, when you're editing a page, there's still the ability to go into HTML code inside of the WYSIWYG editor, correct? Yes, so um, it's called um, source code. So you don't have the little HTML letters again like you currently do. You can go straight into, you know, if you are totally rad and geeky enough to actually code HTML, this is where you go and do that. So it's just that um, this little, these little, you know, brackets is how you get into the source code. So that's how you can do that. Also, um, uh, this is where you could, you know, in the metadata, you can put your keywords in here, um, give it a start date, you know, if it's a, you know, you want something um, to show up later. The new thing, what's also cool about this feature with this new version, which has been asked for a long for a long time, is when you create something and you give it a start date and you put a start date in here, the system will automatically publish that asset as of that start date. So you don't have to remember that, oh, I gave it that start date, you know, next Tuesday to go back in and actually manually publish it. It will automatically just go, oh, that's the date, I'm gonna publish it. So that is a, a good thing. A lot of people had been asking for that. So just, you know, kind of a fun fact there. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about, just kind of creating a new thing, editing, publishing, and then all the other things you had access to do, like moving or renaming, or you wanted to unpublish something, um, um, are over here. So you just have one, one more question. If you're in the edit window and you make a change and you hit discard, what happens then? Oh, so let's say I make a change and I save and preview, and then I, um, oh wait, sorry. What did I just do here? So if I click edit, and I save and preview, let's make a change here. It's, a, it's just a draft, so what I would do, if I hit discard, it would just um, get rid of the change I just made. Okay. So are you sure you want to discard? It's just a draft, so. Um, I would say yes, I want it gone and then start over again. So that's kind of just gives it's so I mean, it's gonna get rid of everything you changed rather than take you back to the edit window. Exactly. So if okay. you are happy with your changes, you hit submit. If you need to continue to make like if you wanted to change, you know, discard everything that you did, you'd hit discard. If you mm -hmm. wanted to change something, you would hit submit, then edit again to change something. So, so the, it, the good thing is it adds a little extra like buffer on like, okay, I want to continue to work on it. But the bad thing mm -hmm. is it does add extra clicks. So you are clicking mm -hmm. a few more times in there. Um, but you know, it's what it is. So there you have it. So, um, oh yeah. So I was going to show you this, this um, dot, dot, dot more. So, because all the tabs are gone and they've basically pulled out edit and publish are the two most common things under more is where you have everything else that you need, you know, if you, that you may want to do. So deleting something, copying it, removing it, renaming, all that stuff is, um, is tucked away there. Probably more than you'll ever want to use, but that's where everything is. So I think, um, my, uh, my last kind of comments regarding this is that, um, like I said over, it's everything's still there. So it, it's just, just, especially you guys as site managers and people that are more like power users that are used to just going in and you do things and you're fast and you're quick, just know and plan that it's gonna take you guys a little bit longer to do the same things that you've been doing until you become familiar with um, the, inter the new interface. Um, so just plan on that and just plan on just going slow and be like, and just knowing you're going to have to click around like, oh, is it here? No, it's not there. And maybe, no, it's probably over here. So just realize that you'll just have to get familiar with it. I think Rob was the one that kind of said, you're in the same neighborhood. You know, we're, we're, it's, it's the same thing. We're in the same neighborhood. You just kind of got to re-familiarize yourself with where things are. 
Just all the houses got painted. All the houses got painted. It's all different colors and gray and fuchsia. Um, one more thing as site managers that you guys would see when you manage your users is this little, what we call a hamburger menu. It's just three little um, bars over here. And this gives you access to that administration tab. When you go in here, this is how you would manage the users. So you would go here um, and see all the users and um, add a user, you know, here. So same, again, same features, same everything is there. You just, just a different place. So I think that's, um, oh, and the WCMS help site, um, is undergoing a complete redo. Of course, everything that we did had to be redone. So it'll be launched at the same time as we launch this new interface, an upgrade. There's gonna be some kind of buried pages that aren't super popular or common that people visit that I haven't gotten to. Um, but for the most part, most of the things you need to know how to do have been updated. So the help site will be updated as well. So if you just get stuck, don't let your head explode. Don't get frustrated. Just go to the help site. See if you can um, figure out it through the help site. And then if you're just like, nope, I can't find anything, then just email help at UCSC. And then that opens a ticket. And then me and the team answer those tickets. So hopefully I wanted to do this for you guys just so that your head doesn't explode in purple powder when we roll this out and you're not like, what? So I wanted to capture, you know, as many people as I can ahead of time. So, um, okay. So Questions, fire away. Teresa, can you show, uh, can you demonstrate editing a block? Yeah, of course. Let me go to a site. And let me go to a site here. And same thing, content blocks. And I would go to, let's say, homepage, middle row, nature news. So it's, this tells you what type of block it is. And then you, same thing, you click edit and then you put your content in here and save and preview and then submit. So same exact process, just looks a little different. And how about, wait, I'm looking for that question. Oh, I lost it. Oh, um, publishing. So it does this automatic publishing when you establish the start date, is that time sensitive too? Or is it just after the, that date? Wait, let me ask that correctly. <laughs> when you're setting a start date and the start date includes a time, does that mean that the block will publish right on, or the page will publish right on that time? Or will it just publish the next time a published job runs after that time? No, it should publish that date on that date. Um, on that date, but yeah, what about I, the time? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, you can set it to say, okay, uh, can you guys see my screen where I'm selecting a date and then I can select the time. I would like it to publish at midnight. So, let's, you know, or noon. Um, so then it's basically, you know, it, date and time specific. I think it's um, safe to say that it will not publish before this exact not, date and time. Exactly. It will not publish before. It says this asset will be published at this date if it is enabled for publishing. Meaning if it's not, if it's in a folder that's set to not publish, it won't publish. But it says but however. it will not publish exactly at the time that's in here. It will only publish sometime after that time. I think it publishes at this time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, that's what I, my understanding is. And I haven't tested that thoroughly, but um, yeah, that's the date and time it will start to publish. So, and I don't know and haven't heard that the end date means it will get unpublished. Um, and that's something else that I should probably test and check out, but haven't gotten to that yet. So there we go. Teresa, can you show where relationships are? Yes, under more, right here. So this tells you, this, this page is referenced on this asset. So it's under that um, more tab. And that works for images as well. So if like I wanted to see where this page is 
you know, used or this image is used, I just go here and can see it's on this index page. And let's see, um, see this great question about page name having rules that would throw a warning if it doesn't conform to the rules. I would love that too. Please the only thing it, it does throw a warning if you try to put like a special character, like a percent sign or an ampersand or something, it'll just say like, I don't know what it says, but it says like not a lot, character not allowed or something. Um, yeah. But that's all it does. If you put a space in there or a capital letter, which are no nos, um, it doesn't give you an error. It just it's just bad form. <laughs> so. And this is a um, this is a general question, I think, about WCMS in general. Okay. Um, that we don't have ways to create something in the system and then share a link with somebody who may not have an account so that they can see it before maybe it goes live on the website? Um, no. We can save things in, in the system, and then if somebody has an account, they can log in and see them before they get published, but there's yeah, no exactly. way to yeah, there's no stage way. something. No, um, shy of a, a screenshot. Um, yeah, we just don't have a, um, a way to do that right now. And there's a few folks wondering if we set an end date for something, does that mean it gets unpublished and becomes unindexable at that time? Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't know. I'll have to, um, I'm making a note right now to check that out um, and test that out. Um, and I'll research that on actually on the Cascade site on the, um, to find out if that's, if they document that anywhere. I just know the start date was the publishable thing, but there was no note on the end date thing that, said we'll unpublish it. Um, usually how it works now is, is um, the end date um, really only is applicable to news articles and that just means that that news article just drops off of that index so you know index page that lists them all um, but it doesn't do anything it doesn't unpublish it but I'll, I'll check that out and I'll um, what I find out I'll put on the help site kind of as more information about that. Mm -hmm. A couple of folks asking questions about um, creating iModules emails in the system. And yeah, that is a, a tool that we rolled out um, last fall or early this spring for creating iModules emails in the WCMS. Um, none of that changes. That's still, um, the, still the same tool. It just will look, uh, it'll have the new interface just like this, but you'll still create emails. The emails will still look the same as they have in the past and we publish them out of here and then put them in iModules. Great. Any other questions? Let's see here. I don't see anything specific to Cascade 8. Uh, there are there's, any, okay, sorry, go ahead. Are there still the uh, include when publishing and include when indexing toggle switches in the system? So, yes, yeah, so it's, that's a good question. Um, so, um, let's see, let's go here, oops, sorry. So if I go to a folder um, and I click edit, then um, you have to go to properties and there's where those two boxes are. Um, and so if you go to, if you wanna do that with a page, um, you still click edit and then you go to the metadata. No, wrong. I lied. It's under configure. So include and indexing, include publishing are here um, under configure. Now, there is a whole boatload of information here that before you had never needed to see and we kind of tucked it away and we haven't done that or don't, I hadn't figure it out how to do this actually, but you're just gonna see a whole bunch of, you know, back end configuration stuff that you can completely ignore. So the only thing that you'll ever touch in this configure gear wheel here are these two things. So under the folder level, it's under um, the properties and under when you're doing a page, it's under the configuration um, little tab. 
and I'm typing a response, but just um, to say out loud, uh, you don't have to stop using the system until next Thursday. You can continue to use the system um, as it looks right now. We're just going to do an in-place upgrade. Well, I'm not going to do it, but <laughs> <laughs> hardworking folks in ITS are yeah. going to do an in-place upgrade next Thursday evening. So everything will change then and all the content uh, from before that moment will come over uh, yeah. when the upgrade is done. Yeah, we're going to do a, we're going to kick y'all out uh, next Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, just basically say, just stop what you're doing at 4. We're going to kick you all out and then we're just going to start the whole process. It's going to be a several hour thing um, that evening. And so um, when you come into work Friday morning, you'll, um, sorry, people in the background. Um, when you come back to work uh, Friday morning, you'll have the new system. Um, your sites will be the same and untouched. Um, and you'll just it'll just look different. So that's a great question. Anything else? Everything. Let's see. I'm still and if you if you guys had a burning question that didn't get answered, it may have gotten kind of lost up in the chat somewhere. So type it again. Just we're going to give it a couple more minutes for your last words and forever hold your peace. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, you can ask anything anytime. But for this, can minute. you? Um, can you show embedding a YouTube video? Uh, embedding a YouTube video. Okay. So, so, yeah. Yeah. So let's just pick a page here. Um, don't worry. This is all like in a staging. And since I'm not actually editing this actual site, so no worries if you guys are like, oh no, what is she doing? So um, what you do is basically go down to the area and you put your cursor where you want the video and you click the little insert edit video button and you put the URL in here. Actually go to embed. No, you don't even have to do this. You can, if you want to do a URL, like a embed code from YouTube, um, you can paste that whole embed code that they provide you. But as far as I've tested, I think you literally can just put the URL in the source field here. And then put your dimensions in here. I want it 500 by 600, you know, pixels wide. And then you hit OK. Um, so that's how you would do that. But I have that all documented on um, the help site as well. So that was kind of a quick and dirty. Again, so it's it's the same. It's it's pretty much the same. The video has actually gotten a little bit easier, and the icons are these are all just a little different. So you just kind of have to do the little hover over, like, oh, okay, that's inserted an image. Oh, okay, that's video one. Oh, that's the source code. So you just kind of slow down and take a little perusal through it. Hey, Teresa. Yeah. Can you select some text here and maybe make a link to something that's on a different site so we can see what it looks like when you link to something from a, a different a different site in, in uh, WC. Yeah, currently the it won't show you anything. It's just the link doesn't go anywhere um, because the system doesn't like to display external things inside of the system. Um, so I think that works the same. So I'm just going to highlight that, click the link, and I'm going to make an external link. I was, I was thinking if it's internal. Oh, internal. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant yeah. external. Okay. Um, so I'm going to choose a different page here. And what about uh, what about a page from a different web, a different site in WCMS? Oh, um, that's like a external. news article. Okay, that's um, an external link. So anything that's not inside your site is considered an external link. Um, even if it's like one of our news articles. Even if it's one of your news articles. So if if oh. someone's yeah, if someone's creating. Um, so the news, they have access to view news. Um, um, oh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, I was thinking about when yeah. you want to link to a page that exists in WCMS, but it just exists in a different, different, in a different site. Yeah, no, it's external. Internal is mm -hmm. only lets you choose a file page or um, inside your site. Um, if you want to, um, link to I thought, I thought you could is it is that something we admins are the only ones who can do I was just thinking if you click that choose file page link, have, and then if you click browse um, they don't have act, you can to other sites so like we have access to all the sites but they don't 
So they don't, but this little drop down will show you any site that you have access to, correct? Yeah, but I have never, I haven't tried that actually. I don't know if, um, so let's see. So if I type in. Yeah, there's news. Try news right there. Okay, so news. Um, Do a search for like house Search work. for an out. Oh, oh, okay. An art article. Um, let's see how that works. Yeah, it was a, it's one of our um, category pages, but. Oh, okay. Sorry, I picked the wrong one. Anyway. That's okay. No, that's uh, okay. Yeah. That's all I was looking for was how that, that linking between sites works. Yeah, so they, so users would only, could only do that for sites to which they have access. Um, we have access to all of them, so that works for us. But I actually have never done that before. I, I have, okay. it's, it's always been. If it's not in your site, it's an external link. Um, okay. So, so there you go. There you go, guys. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing anything that's Cascade Eight specific. Yeah, I want to try to keep this to just Cascade 8 stuff. If you have general WCMS questions, just email help at UCSC and we'll, we'll answer those um, or shoot me an email or whatever. Um, because we're going to, we, this is being recorded, right? Yes. yes. And we're going to post this. So for, for the other, other hundreds and hundreds of people who aren't joining us on this phone call, they can watch this kind of as a, you know, overview. So, um, uh, one last question I think is a good good one to end on, and that is, um, are there any big new features that are different in Cascade 8 that, you know, what, yeah. are there any marquee features that we should uh, let not, you know about? Not anything that's like mind blowing. The, there's just, there's just um, like, the, like I said, the, the start date automatic publish, that's kind of a cool thing. And then that little task widget where you can basically assign each other um, tasks and reminders to do certain things. Um, and that's kind of front and center. And then the, um, just the handiness of that one dashboard, you just, you've got the one place for everything instead of having all these different dashboards for all these different sites. Um, but yeah, not a huge amount of new functionality. It's just a, a cleaner interface where they've tucked away things so that it's not so cluttery. Yeah. One more, one last question, and then we um, can close. If you click that logo in the top left, that's how you get back to the just dashboard. Thank you. Right? Yes, this is the the new Cascade logo here, and that takes you back to this dashboard, which is kind of your home environment. The other thing that's kind of um, I wanted to just point out um, is that if at any point you've kind of configured everything and you're like, ah, I, I want to reset everything, you can reset it back to the default. And then you can also, there's a couple things in here that you want, you can add widgets. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to add um, stale content or something like that. Um, the analytics here, um, we don't have analytics configured directly connected to Cascade. So as much as we would love to have these work for you guys, we just can't do that right now. Um, so, don't ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just, tried, a lot of reasons we have, tried for like a year, literally to get yeah, this to work. And it we tried can, many times. Yes. So, um, so I wish I could just gray those out for you. Like, nope. But anyway, um, and these are all movable. Like if you're like, Oh, I really want to, um, you know, have this one be right in the middle. Oops, sorry. You can click and drag it. Or maybe that one you can't drag. Yeah. These can be dragged right here and you can configure it and move it to however you want it to look. So, um, there you go. Okay, well, um, I think we're gonna uh, close now. And um, yeah, again, just kind of, you know, keep an eye and ear out for this rollout next week. Um, and just, you know, just kind of slowing down and just getting familiar with everything um, when you log back in on Friday. So, um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing here.
Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, you you're welcome. Job. Thanks, everybody. I'm super happy with, we had like almost 90 people at one point. So that's like awesome. Love all you guys. Wow. It's great. Okay. And we'll share the recording with everyone after we're done today. Yes. Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Now there's an awkward, like, how do I end this thing? <laughs> thing which I can't ever figure out how to do that. But. You, say, you say bye, and then I'll stop. And then, then we start poking around.